It's Friday, June 8th, 2012. I'm Alex Jones. Get ready for a special edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight, a firestorm of outrage amongst Ron Paul supporters as Rand Paul announces his endorsement for establishment candidate Mitt Romney. Alex Jones reports. Then, a recap of last week's highlights from Bilderberg 2012 as the Patriot Movement exposes the global mafia. And Gerald Salente joins Alex Jones to break down the latest meltdown of the Ron Paul campaign. There are many, 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 many more of us than them. And if we stand united, we will defeat them. They are only a small minority of sociopaths and psychopaths, just like that little freak Hitler, just like that little freak Mussolini, and just like all these freaks on the presidential reality show. Don't let a freak rule you. Find your courage. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. First off tonight, the controversy. Senator Rand Paul came out last night, we're close to 24 hours into this now, on Sean Hannity's neocon program and endorsed Mitt Romney for president, peaking rumors after secret meetings he had or private meetings that he's being looked at for VP. Now, they need to clarify what's going on here because simultaneously Ron Paul put out a message saying, be respectful at Tampa, we're not going to try to take it over now. That is really being taken bad by supporters of Congressman Ron Paul. I can tell you right now that this is going over like a lead balloon. And I certainly hope that everyone out there who supported Ron Paul understands it's bigger than just one man. He has a great voting record. Rand Paul's a great guy, has a good voting record. I'm not saying there are enemies. But to string everybody along and, oh, we're going to secretly win with the delegates just to keep momentum, to make a deal with Romney, and then to have backroom deals, if they were going to do this, they should have come out and said to the supporters in the press conference, we think it's good to try to make a deal with Romney. We think it's good to try to take over the Republicans. The problem is Romney is bought and paid for by the New World Order. And Ron Paul is known for never compromising. Rand has been known for that as well. And this is not going well. This is not going well. Uh, people are not liking this, and Ron Paul is the figurehead of the Liberty Movement. The Liberty Movement's going to be stronger than ever, but the system is trying to use this to drive wedges. And I have to say, I cannot support Romney as much as I hate Obama. They're both bought and paid for by the very same interest. And I even got calls on the air today, on radio, saying, where's the proof that he endorsed uh, Romney? This would be like if I came out and endorsed the UN or world government. That's really kind of how I see it, and that's how my listeners see it, who are original Ron Paul supporters, who were Ron Paul supporters before it was cool, 17 years. People think they've been used, they feel betrayed, the office feels betrayed. Uh, that's just how this came off. That's just how this came off. Uh, but in case you're living in denial, here is a video clip of it. But, you know, now that the nominating process is over, tonight I'm uh, happy to announce that I'm going to be supporting Governor Romney. Yep. Yeah. And, of course, I get it. The idea is they're Republicans. Romney's better than Obama. But is he? Supported abortion, carbon taxes, wrote the Obamacare uh, plan, supported anti-gun stuff, uh, amnesty. I mean, Romney talks a different game today, and some say, well, let Rand be his VP or let Paul be on the cabinet, and, and, and then we'll get to steer things. I see that more as us being co-opted. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if they get this deal and... A couple months into Romney's campaign, uh, you know, he starts saying, you know, more libertarian things, starts doing things, starts putting more people on his cabinet. Maybe that's the case, but in my gut, I think that people are stringing themselves along. Maybe the Pauls as well. Uh, but this whole thing is super creepy. My gut says danger will Robinson. Now that leads us to this video that I shot right before we went on air tonight because I wanted to really be able to be focused and address Senator Paul and Congressman Paul and to really point out my concerns and my listeners' concerns. 
So here is my message directly, my open video letter to Ron Paul and Co. Here it is. Well, you know, uh, my first choice had always been my father. I campaigned for him when I was 11 years old. He's still my first pick. But, you know, now that the nominating process is over, tonight I'm uh, happy to announce that I'm going to be supporting Governor Romney. Alex Jones here with a message to Ron Paul, as well as his son, Senator Rand Paul. I have supported you, Congressman, for 17 years on the air. I've interviewed you more than 200 times. And you have a voting record that is 100% constitutional. And I have supported you because you've been a man of no compromise. There can be no compromise with tyranny and oppression and unconstitutional usurpation of our liberties. You know that. And I watched the last few months in horror, knowing how the delegate process works, as your campaign encouraged your supporters to build up the biggest delegate count they could to supposedly take over the nomination and to now see you come out and say, we're still going, but be respectful. And yes, I can see we won't get enough delegates taking wind out of your own sails and out of our sails. And at the same time, have your son, Senator Rand Paul, come out and with pleasure endorse Mitt Romney. It's painful to watch. What did you expect to happen from this? Well, you're very politically smart. You knew it would blow up in your face. And I have to tell you, I am not going to go down on the Ron Paul ship. If you don't come out and explain yourself to your constituents and supporters, this is going to spread like a cancer through Campaign for Liberty. It's going to be a wedge that the globalist corporatist media can use to drive into the liberty movement. I know you have a lot of mainline advisors you guys have gotten. I know Jesse Benton has brought some of those folks in. But it's time to get back to your roots. Victor Hugo said, no army can stop an idea whose time has come. The idea of restoring the republic has come. You've admitted you're just a focal point of that. Four years ago on my show, you said that half the support you got in your first campaign was from my listeners. Well, my listeners are almost tearing my doors down in anger right now. And they're very, very sad because they believed in you. And it is a compromise to go with politics 101, as I saw one commenter on Infowars.com. That, oh, you expand your base, you make alliances. You can't do it with Mitt Romney because he's been for carbon taxes, abortion, open borders, and helped write Obamacare. You ran campaign ads against him. Serial hypocrites and flip-floppers can't clean up the mess. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. But only after supporters demanded it. It was clear you were playing nice with him and targeting Santorum during the campaign at the debates. But still, I ignored what my intuition and my political savvy told me. I understand the political idea of expediency and that you've got all this capital politically and that if you don't go try to influence Romney, it's all lost. That's the thing. You're not going to be able to influence Romney. And six months down the road... If he unseats the tyrant Obama, he will continue doing what the very same globalist special interests want. And now your wagon and Rand's wagon is hooked to him. But I met with him recently. I had about a 30-minute meeting with him. One of the big issues is auditing the Fed. We think there needs to be more transparency to the Fed. And this is something that Governor Romney uh, was supportive of. I'm not going to spend my time going after Ben Bernanke. I'm not going to take my, my effort and focus on the Federal Reserve. It's important to have the Fed as an independent agency. I do not think you want to have the, uh, the, the, uh, the Congress of the United States uh, trying to uh, pull strings. Your supporters are intelligent. They're sophisticated compared to mainline Republicans and Democrats. And they understand that. So they're decoupling from you right now. Ron Paul, all the capital you created that you tried to gamble on getting your son on the VP ticket or yourself into the cabinet is blowing up in your face. You need to get ahead of this now. You don't have long. And come out and speak directly to your constituents, not in an email, but in a press conference for the world to see or your 30 plus years of fighting tyranny is gonna be seriously damaged. We appreciate the work you've done, your great voting record, being anti-war, being anti-Federal Reserve, anti-globalist, standing up for national sovereignty, standing up against corporate welfare. We know you're a good man. We know Rand's a good man, but you guys have gotten so close to the beltway and you've had such success, you've been catapulted from being a man in the wilderness, Dr. No, to the forefront. 
you really won Iowa and Maine. You were winning and the system cheated you so they could put Mitt Romney in. And now you're telling the delegates, go to Tampa and be respectful and concede to Romney. There's a major contradiction there. I had listeners hammering me to get behind this delegate operation. And I said, look, maybe Ron Paul knows something I don't, but he's not gonna be able to use these delegates because even if he got close to a majority, they're gonna point out that Romney won the majority of the states and it's gonna be spun as stealing an election. Ron Paul needs to come out against the NDAA, against Obama launching wars without congressional uh, approval and serious treason. He needs to get behind Walter Jones's bill that we had to push Paul to do uh, to impeach Obama for going under UN control and handing over our military to foreign powers. I've seen a lot of signs a lot of people campaign for liberties bringing in right now. Our Council on Foreign Relations and Globalist. Best case scenario, the Ron Paul system, Ron Paul Inc. tried to take over the Republican Party and the opposite is happening. Worst case scenario, they've been listening to some Benedict Arnolds inside and have absolutely fallen into a trap. I'm ashamed that I didn't listen to the voices warning me in the last six months and pointing out this trail of many betrayals that we've been witnessing leading up to this larger betrayal. Ron Paul, you know that tens of millions of Americans have broken their backs out there knocking on doors and making phone calls and donating and giving money and fighting on the internet for you because you were no compromise. And now to engage in old fashioned political merger with Romney and all the things he's done even if you have a good reason for it, it's not going to sell with your constituents. And to watch you mortally wounding the movement that you helped build is very, very sad. But again, liberty moves forward, people are waking up. It's just that I wanted Campaign for Liberty and your dynasty that you helped create politically to move forward and be even stronger in the future. That's why I encourage Rand when nobody was supporting him to run for the Senate. His first contributions came from my audience in Kentucky. The, the people that first made up his original campaign staff were my listeners who moved from Texas and other areas up there to support you. Then the Republican insiders tried to sabotage you. Then the Democrats did. And later when you beat them, they came to you with a handout and you began to walk down that road with them. It's not too late, Rand, to turn back. It's not too late, Ron, to turn back. Don't destroy yourselves. You have been warned. I live here in the grassroots where the rubber meets the road. And I'm telling you, what you're doing has gone over like a Led Zeppelin. You're going to be betrayed. You're from Washington. You guys claim to be statesmen and not politicians, but you're jumping in bed with some of the most duplicitous, oily people the world has ever seen that are bought and paid for by the big mega banks. It's time to put the chips on the table. The people that made you what you are politically today are all watching. And you're getting a second chance. Don't blow it. From a friend and a supporter, I'm Alex Jones signing off from the front lines of the info war. Austin, Texas. The choice is up to you, Rand Paul and Ron Paul. But if you continue to go down this path, Anybody who's got any political understanding can understand that when you go from principle to politics, I mean, look at those votes. 90 plus percent are very, very angry at you. Just on that video, I've seen polls showing the same numbers. But when you go from principle to politics, you lose the allure that you had. It was your father's principled constitutional stand that made him so popular. And I've talked to Ron Paul insiders inside high level in the campaign uh, saying that it's, it, it's, it's mainly that people think they're rock stars now, not even Ron Paul or Rand Paul, but some of the staff. And you guys are killing the golden goose that laid the Liberty eggs, I tell you, a bad, bad move. But just watch, just watch. If you don't reverse course now, well, I already said it in the video, so I'm done talking about it. We'll discuss it with Gerald Salente coming up uh, this evening. Shifting gears, lawsuit, TSA claims it can lie to the public uh, in responses to lawsuits, lie about radiation, lie about groping, all they do is lie. They're the globalist occupation army here to acclimate us to the total police state uh, takeover.
And so what do you what do you expect to happen? By the way, I forgot one more point. We have a short clip from Braveheart dealing with Ron Paul. And I made the point that in there, Robert the Bruce, his dad is meeting with him in the tower. And he says, look, you sold out uh, William Wallace. You expanded your lands, your titles. You're surviving. And he says, no, father, I'll never do this again. And then later turns against the king and wins and Scotland gets its freedom. But earlier on at the battle, Braveheart learns that he's been betrayed. And, and, and I hope that's not what's happening here. But it doesn't look good. Uh, let's go ahead and go to that clip. for the foreign banks. I, why? Jesse Benton said so. He, he told me I, I, I would be president. I, you know, all of the stuttering people that give me advice. I, why though? Why? I mean, <laughs> oh my goodness, I shouldn't make a sick joke out of this. Look, I'm not selling out my integrity, okay? Just because I can get invited to the White House later or whatever, I can care less. Like, I would pay money to not be invited to the White House unless it was the restoration of the Republic. Enough of that, enough of that, enough of that. They'll, you know, we're about a day into this and haven't seen any response. Haven't seen any response. Yeah, there's the new American flag. That's the new American handshake. Government minion. Let me see your testicles. Let me crush them. Get your children in here with known pedophiles. I mean, that's who they hire as the commanders. I forget the point I was even going to make about the whole Ron Paul, Rand Paul thing. Okay, let's uh, get into the bankers raping everyone, speaking of TSA. Exclusive, Spain poised to request EU bank aid, which is made up zeros and ones by the private banking cartel. And the more they get in debt, the more real assets they get. And the debt's the bankers' debt to begin with that got the countries into debt. The bankers create the derivatives, have the country sign on too big to fail, then say, you're in debt to us who they bailed out, the bankers give them more fiat money and then raise the taxes, bankrupting the economy more to consolidate the economy so the bankers can take over the real assets. Pretty simple. But it's so over the top, how do you deal with it? How many years did we tell you and our guests tell you, Robert Chapman, countless others, that it would go Ireland, Greece, Spain, on right through Europe, right through Asia, and right to the U.S.? It's a global depression to consolidate wealth. We have all their own documents. Here's another one. IMF report to show Spanish banks need $40 billion in aid, just to begin with. Again, to bail out the banks they already bailed out, but now they're indebted to the banks. That's how the scam works. Uh, yeah, $40 billion euros, about the same as a dollar. Now, continuing, here is the uh, Detroit newspaper. City officials, Detroit will go broke in a week if consent deal lawsuit isn't withdrawn. And the, the globalists, the feds, are trying to bankrupt them over chicken feed, 35 million. They want to bulldoze one third of the city. We paid 22 billion in taxpayer money to ship General Motors to China and Brazil. And then now as the country implodes, they private corporations are taking it over. Same thing now in Rhode Island. We're saying no more voting, no more city council in a big city in Rhode Island. You can look it up. We're now run by foreign banks. All right, continuing here. With today's daily quote, speaking of how they get us into artificial debt to control us, this is by Plato, all the gold which is under or upon the earth is not enough to give in exchange for virtue. And that is certainly true. And one final point that I wanted to make, you know, I, I, maybe I was subconsciously remembering that Plato quote when I gave the quote that was picked up online years ago, that all the gold in the hills is worthless compared to good friends and family you can trust in a time of crisis. There was a better quote than that that came off the top of my head, but 
um, you get the gist. All the gold in the hills is not as valuable as good friends and family you can trust, I think was the basic quote. Um, you know what, I'll cover this on Monday. Uh, we now have an Ask Alex video we put out weekly at planetinfowars.com. And in that, I was asked about Obama and Law of the Sea Treaty and executive orders. And yes, indeed, he isn't going to sign an executive order. He signed one two years ago, basically saying the UN can take over all our waterways, including lakes and streams and rivers. Uh, and you can find that out, Executive Order 13,547. Just like he says, we're under UN treaties to shut down power plants, uh, even though Congress didn't pass it. Uh, so that's all at planetinfowars.com. Get organized. If you're disillusioned by uh, the worship of Mitt Romney and being told you should be respectful of the Republican Party leadership and shut up, uh, well, we're still fighting on at planetinfowars.com. Gerald Salente is coming up, but you saw our live streaming for five days at Bilderberg with the thousands that came out to protest uh, over the five days, as much as 700 at one time, but over the five days, well over 2,000, 2,500, I would estimate. And you saw a lot of our low-res live streams here at prisonplanet.tv and also at infowars.com. But here is some of the high-res stuff we shot that we just got downloaded off the uh, tapes, uh, interspersed with some of the archives of the live streams that Rob Jacobson put together today. So we're going to show you some of the highlights of Bilderberg 2012, the People's LRAD, and more. And then we're going to go right into our interview with Gerald Salente. Stay with us. This is a criminal gathering. You are on notice by the people of the United States to get the hell out of our country. But we were able All right, to just keep your cameras at waist level, but keep rolling here. All right. Uh, go ahead and pull up right over here. Pleasure meeting you. Hey, Richard, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. How's it going? Pretty good. You are? I'm Alex Jones. Nice to meet you, sir. How can I help you? Uh, well, we are guests at this hotel, and I just got into town, and uh, they had told me that they were getting a room somewhere else. Uh, unfortunately, the hotel is having some renovations done, so we don't have any. Oh. We don't have any rooms for you, and I believe Mr. Stoles did tell you that. And being private property, the restaurant's not open today, and we don't have any rooms for you, so I'm going to have to ask you. Okay, well, I'll go. Can I get my voucher for my room? The room has been taken care of for the first night over at... Okay, can I have a map stand. for it, please? Sure, no problem. I'll be right back. Thank you. Can you please stop recording me? Well, I mean, we're, this, is a, this is a public commons. This is semi-public commons. Where are the signs we can't film? Because because we we'll leave if that's the case. But I need you to have me a courier deliver it over to my other place. This look, this is private property. I don't understand why you're filming me and why you're taking pictures of the hotel. I'm, well, we were guests that were booked here, and you told us we are leaving, sir. You're not leaving. No, we are. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you your. We will leave when you give us that, and we'll be out there bullhorn in the Bilderberg Group. Off your property the entire time. I won't be back on your property until four years later when you have it here again if America still exists. Okay. Thank you. Hey, will you say hi to David Rockefeller and Queen Beatrix for me? Yes, sir. Oh, they're not coming the by for the renovations? There's your directions to the hotel. There's for your reservations for both rooms. So that is very sweet of you. Yes, Can I sir. shake your hand? Yes, you may. Thank you. Thank you, sir. These guys are the mafia. If you want to give me any intel later, once you see how evil they are, or if Hillary says don't look her in the eyes, you can always contact me on Infowars.com. Okay. Don't worry, the rest of your staff will be as well. Okay. Been, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you, because no one ever helps us till after they meet those monsters. Bye. Then we get everything, including all the paperwork. Say hi to the NSA operating illegally in all your rooms as well. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've got way over 500 people. The Washington Post is reporting two dozen. So do you see two dozen here? No. Hundreds here, hundreds there, hundreds down there. Well over 500 people. Most people I've talked to only can come through for one day. They've all got so many jobs. So we've had thousands the last four days come out here. I want to salute everybody that came out to address the real elite, the robber barons that have taken over our society. But more importantly, we have blown Bilderberg wide open. All over Europe, all over the United States, Canada, Latin America, Africa, Asia, there are thousands of articles now about Bilderberg. They have wanted to remain secret because they are the shadow government. They are the oligarchs that live off tax money and insider deals. They are the robber barons and they are being defeated. This is a historic, 
event, and I want to commend all those that are out here. Yeah! Yeah! Uncovering of the builder bed pays off for the all efforts you did for the past few years trying to uncover this uh, secret lodge here. <coughs> yes, there have been people like Jim Tucker for 35 years trying to expose it. Westbrook Pegler, 50 plus years ago, was the first. He didn't even know the name. Now we have moles inside, we're blowing them wide open, and the people are discovering there's a private corporate oligarch through banks, IMF World Bank, carrying out fraud. It is so exciting what's happening. We are identifying the puppet masters instead of just the puppets. They hate this. They need their secrecy. They are extremely angry right we're now. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You're the best. You're the best. You're the best. I'm going to get our reinforcements. Get them. Millenberg's down there. All right, let's go. Let's go. He looks better. Keep fighting the Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Why do you think we're sitting here with cameras and bullhorns? This war is inside your mind. You've been deceived over decades. Over decades. Over decades, the more you look into it, you will find out that you live in a perceptual matrix that they have created to um, um, commercial TV, television. They try to form your opinion. They try to form the per per perception to something that suits their agenda. We're here to drag you kicking and screaming out of the false reality that has been created for you by Hollywood, by television. Why do you think there's a cable? Why is there a cable? running into your house. How brilliant of a plan was that of the New World Order to say, hey, I got an idea. I'm a Marine upholding my oath to the Constitution. That is why I am on this side of the fence. Your paper notes, your retirement, your pension, your benefits will not buy you food, filth, and shelter in the future. system is the basis of your control and the way to destroy it is to no longer accept your notes for our labor to hell with a legal tender law we are revealing you as the puppet masters you will be defeated your days are numbered i suggest you leave immediately Henry Ford once said, it's just as well that the people do not understand the banking system. For if they did, there would be a revolution before the morning. We are waking up to this banking system, and tomorrow there will be a revolution.
Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. Patriots are talking. This past week, it's been about the clandestine elite globalists meeting Bilderberg. Any of them ever heard of the U.S. Logan Act? Oh, you mean that pesky little federal law that states unauthorized citizens shall not coerce with foreign governments unless they face to be fined and imprisoned? Well, users on Planet InfoWars have, and they're not sitting idly by. Users like Jock Doubleday are completing missions to write articles about the Bilderberg attendees. In his article, The Devil Wears a Heart Necklace, he features Heather Reisman. And you can read more about her role at Bilderberg Group and her influence outside of the meeting at planetinfowars.com. Check out this and more. Find out what patriots are talking about. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure, but if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. And we are back. Thank you for joining us on this Friday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. We're about to have an in-depth interview with the head of the Trends Journal, who's been calling it like he sees it. And unfortunately, he's been about 99% accurate. Gerald Salente, my mother's favorite guest. It was Gerald Salente and Bob Chapman. Bob Chapman died Monday. Uh, they buried him, God rest his soul, on on Wednesday. So uh, now he's the, he's the sole survivor of my mother's twin favorite guest, uh, and that is Gerald Salente, but everybody should pray for Bob and his family, a great patriot in the fight for liberty. The internationalforecaster.com has a lot of the archive work he did, and Bob was also very accurate in his predictions. Speaking of accurate predictions, Jesse Ventura is back in town, and he's going to give us the first interview uh, coming up, I think it's Monday or is it Tuesday, on his new book that we happen to have. This isn't even for sale till Monday, but we're selling it now at InfoWars.com, and your purchase supports the broadcast. It's Demo, Crips, and Reblublicans. No More Gangs in Government. He told me this title a year ago when he began to write it. He just finished it a few months ago, and it's an amazing uh, new book. Really helps expose how special interests own both parties and how it's a gang, and how you don't get into the upper echelons unless you join the gang. That's why things can't change. This is available at InfoWarsShop.com or InfoWarsStore.com will also get you there. And your support makes all of this possible. We also have 15-day free trials running at PrisonPlanet.tv for all of my films, my book, Paul Watson's book, uh, hundreds of other films we've been authorized to post, nine plus years uh, of uh, my radio show and special TV reports, and now the nightly news, 15 cents a day, PrisonPlanet.tv. It is so important to support the alternative media that now in numbers is defeating the dinosaur corporatist uh, demo crips and reblublicans system. Now, speaking of somebody who understood all of this, Gerald Salente, been a consultant, worked in government, um, best-selling author, researcher, one of the top trends forecasters in the world. And we'll have his website on screen for you. Hope that you will visit it and sign up for the free trends alerts there, but also sign up uh, to get the journal itself. 
because Gerald has been called by the New York Times, you name it, a pessimist porn dealer. He said, years before it happened, Greece would implode by design. He said Ireland would, then Spain, then Italy, then Portugal, then, then France. Why, it's all happening just like he said. Uh, he talked about the rise of the Tea Party before it rose. He has accurately seen what's coming. And you know, months ago, I don't know, it was two, three months ago, he was on. He said, I'm disappointed in Ron Paul. He's not being enough of a hard charger. Uh, he's not going after the Republican Democratic system enough. I don't think this is going to go well. His, his supporters, like myself, he said of himself, are going to be disappointed. And the first question I've got for him tonight before we get into the latest trends developments, what's happening in the world in general, and future trends he sees developing, and new augmentations or things he can add to some of the interim and, and uh, you know, closer uh, trends that are now unfolding. Before we go there, I wanted to ask him the question that's on everybody's mind. What does Gerald Salente think of Senator Rand Paul, who's got a pretty good voting record compared to other senators, not as good as his dad, coming out and endorsing Mitt Romney while simultaneously he's been coordinating with his father's campaign and implying, hey, we're getting the delegates, we're still going to win somehow. And I'd held my tongue, but around in the office I said, I don't want to hear about this delegate business. Because if he went in there and even got enough delegates, the media would say he was stealing the election. But he, I go, he doesn't even have 20%, so everybody thinks he's going to win. They're playing into this. Uh, this is going to be a big letdown when, when Ron Paul doesn't win. He's won by injecting constitutionalist ideas, exposing the Federal Reserve, crony capitalism, uh, the monopoly system. Well, in the same day, last night, Paul comes out in a press release, Senator uh, uh, Paul's father, Congressman Paul, and says, be nice, we're not going to win now with the delegates. Go there and be respectful of a Republican system that's stolen delegates, a Republican system that has arrested people and beating them up as we speak at different delegate events everywhere where Paul's got all the delegates and the leadership says we're changing the rules and the cops beat everybody up. Uh, the same Republicans that stole Iowa, that's now come out mainstream news, the same delegates uh, that have stolen all of these other, uh, the same Republican system that's stolen the delegates and that's stolen these big races, this is incredible. And all Ron Paul has is that he's never compromised. Even if we don't agree with all of his policies, and I agree with almost all of them, it's the fact that he never compromised, never flip-flopped, never was bought off, was a true blue person, even if he wasn't the best orator. Now, to have Ron Paul come out and do this, when his son on the same day comes out and endorses Romney, this has caused a mass exodus, a huge conniption fit, uh, inside of libertarians and constitutionalists. And here's the big problem. And I covered it earlier in my message to Ron Paul. The supporters are now being attacked by the mainline Republicans and said, ah, kooks, shut up, he's gotten wise. And it's very insulting and people feel betrayed. They feel used and they're very, very angry, almost like a scorned woman. And uh, if this wasn't done on purpose by the Rand Paul and Ron Paul campaigns, it might as well have been. If Jesse Benton didn't do this on purpose to destroy Ron Paul's name, well, then a little devil told him in his ear. Because you couldn't figure out a way to destroy Ron Paul's capital better than joining with Romney and telling people, hey, go sit down and shut up and be nice. So that's my little rant on the subject. Uh, joining us is Gerald Salente briefly on that, then we'll segue into all the other data he's got on Europe and more. Gerald, uh, thank you for coming on with us uh, today. Uh, this is uh, well, an amazing time to be alive. What do you make of the whole Ron Paul, Rand Paul situation? Rand Paul is an untested commodity. He's brand new into the game. He says a lot of things that get people, they knock him off kilter, and then he gets back on. So, you know, I, I'm not sold on him yet. And as for Ron Paul, I'm disappointed. And as you well know, and I've made it publicly clear, he would have been the only candidate that I would have voted for. And I would have voted for him. Again, I didn't agree with a lot of what he said, but a lot of, but most of what he said, particularly on the important issues of the wars and the Federal Reserve. Now, by him going and supporting the Republican Party, as I've made very clear, I look at the Republicans and the Democrats as just a political crime family, a gang of 535. That's how many senators and congressmen there are. So I'm not going to be an accessory to the crime. 
And by voting for a Republican or a Democrat, to me, it's a criminal act. Because when Ron Paul or Rand Paul says to support the Republican Party and Mitt Romney, who is that supporting? Oh, McConnell? Lindsey, the Graham Cracker over there? I mean, look at this cast of characters. Bonner? So well, who are we supporting by going, taking Ron Paul's word to go after Mitt Romney? Mitt Romney, there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. There is nothing that Mittens Romney stands for that one Ron Paul supporter I know could buy into it. With, tell, me the, tell me the issue. Tell me one issue that Mittens is on board with what Ron Paul and all of his supporters, and I know a lot of these guys, particularly these young guys that gave all their sweat, their blood, and their money and to really, really pound the pavement for Ron Paul. So I have to tell you, to me, this is a sellout because doing anything with the Republican Party or the Democratic Party, as I said, is doing something with the Bananos or the Gambinos. They're just a crime family with a white shoe label on them. These are the mass murderers, send over drones, start wars, and rob your money. Why would anybody support them unless they're out of their minds? Gerald, Ron Paul has a great voting record. He's a man of integrity. What are they thinking, telling their constituents, hey, we're going to win with the delegates, don't worry, and then now saying, oh, yeah, go be respectful of Romney, basically, and the same day having Rand come out and make the announcement on Sean Hannity. I mean, if P Paul would have come out with a press conference with his son, or if the senator would have come out and explained, we believe it's politics 101, we want to try to influence from within, well, that, I mean, the polls don't do politics 101, or at least they hadn't. That's why Ron was loved. The way they did this is so destructive. I mean, do you think it's ham-fistedness, or do you think they lost touch? Because just as somebody who studies this stuff, I couldn't have imagined, but I know you worked in politics as well, something more destructive, more stupid to do. Uh, why do you think they did this? Just starstruck by Romney? You know, I don't know. I can't, I can't, I can't, I don't know what's inside their head or, or inside their heart. And I can only speculate that they didn't have a shot at this and it was a, a face saving move not to be excluded completely and maybe you know maybe they'll get a little bit of floor time or something maybe they cut a little deal like that but it's so good to be excluded from the i agree as i said you know i won't i don't associate with lesser of two evils and that's what this is so what ron paul and Rand paul have asked their supporters to do is to support a lesser of two evils and as i said show me one only one one major issue that ron paul supporters believed ron paul in that mittens romney supports i don't know of any so i see absolutely no no validity in his doing something like this well, I've quietly had high-level Republican media people contact me and, 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 you know, basically tell me this was coming. And I didn't even know what to say. I didn't know if they were telling me the truth. I figured they were. They've given me good info before. And just watching a lot of other things happening, Ron Paul was saying they were going to take over the Republican Party. But instead, that mafia, as you've described it, that organized crime syndicate, it's just taking them over. I don't think it's too late, though, for Ron Paul to come out and clarify his stance and try to pull out of this. But if they continue down this road, man, it, it, I think this means curtains for the whole Ron Paul franchise. Well, again, you know, Rand Paul coming out, and correct me if I'm wrong, supporting Romney, is that right? Yes, we have the clip. He says he's a great guy. Yeah, so, I mean, that to me loses all credibility. You know, and, and there is absolutely, as I said, there's not one issue that Romney stands on, that Ron Paul supporters believe in. And here you have Rand Paul, that's supposed to be the follow-up to his father, selling out the folks. And, so I can, and that's why I've said, Alex, as you well know, I'm not voting in this election. And I'll, my belief is that if less than 40% of the people go to the polls, we could call this an illegitimate election. What are they giving us? A choice between Pepsi and Coke, Burger King or, or McDonald's, you eat or drink any one of them, it's going to kill you.
Exactly. So that's our choice of a country of 312 million people, and we got these two presidential reality show candidates left? I mean, do you see Obama on The View? What a disgrace. Sitting there with the ladies of The View, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, Malai and Sasha and, and, and uh, his wife there, you know, Michelle, they make fun of my big ears and my big nose. <laughs> Could you imagine Eisenhower sitting there? Could you imagine Eisenhower calling up, hey, Mamie, I'm thinking of, uh, you know, should we go invade Normandy today? You know, ask the kids as Obama, you know, I asked uh, Malai and Sasha, you know, they have some friends in school that have gay parents, whether or not, you know, we should have this gay bill. Could you imagine Eisenhower doing this? Look at these guys. They're not guys. They're metrosexuals, half man, half woman. Who knows what they are? But I can tell you what they don't have. So by Rand Paul selling out uh, Ron Paul supporters to me, this is the reason why we need a new third party and break the chains from this control that we have. Look, I grew up during the Cold War. They used to say how to have an election in the Soviet Union. <laughs> what a joke. 98% of the people get reelected. Yeah, just like in the United States. What, 96% of the incumbents get back in because they buy the elections? What do you mean buy the elections? Those are campaign contributions. Yeah, how about bribes and payoffs? Let's expand on that. What do you predict is going to happen next politically now if you have Mitt Romney bought and paid for by Bain Capital, Obama bought and paid for by it, uh, he helped write Obamacare, he's for open borders, gun control, all the things Obama supports. I see no Mitt Romney stickers, only Ron Paul stickers everywhere. The tail is wagging the dog. You predicted the Tea Party two years before it materialized. What do you predict comes now? What's going to become of constitutionalists that use Ron Paul as a focal point? What do you see with five million guns being sold a month? What do you see in the future of this country? And then let's look at Europe financially and other trends that are on your radar screen. Well, first of all, on, on the political end, there's a huge vacuum and it's waiting to be filled. And now Ron Paul has vacated it. There is no Freedom Party anymore. There's no Constitutional Party anymore. It's gone. And all of this election is going to be again, it's going to be a corporate media election. And you're the, you're the Bilderberg man, you and Webster Topley, you're the guys that put, he put it on the map, you kept it on the map. And what you have done, the whole United States and much of the world should applaud you and your team for putting this out in public because you got the two Bilderberg buddies fighting it out. That's all this is. May the worst man win because both of them are nothing more than mouthpieces for the group. So now as we go, as you want me to look at what's going on in the world, this was a very important week and tomorrow is going to be an important day. The, the Spanish government really desperately needs about 40 billion euros to bail out their banks. They're going to be crying for more euro support. I want to make this really clear. The European Monetary Union charters have been destroyed. They don't, they're, they're not worth the paper they're printed on. They're just a lot of crap. They don't abide by them. Countries aren't supposed to get bailed out. The next big thing is, and this is very important, are they going to come out with a euro bond scheme? We're going to take all these useless bonds from countries like Italy and Spain and Portugal and Greece and Ireland and put them in a basket and call one level on them so they can keep the Ponzi scheme going. They're talking about doing a bond deal that they won't have to pay him off for 25 years. And again, years. you said years ago, and Bob Chapman and many others, that exactly this would happen. They implode it by design, claim they're the saviors, and then get everybody even to deeper debt when over 90% of it is derivatives that these gangsters created. It's incredible, and we covered that in the news portion tonight. They're now announcing it. I mean, how much will Europe put up with? They'll continue to do it, just like they put up in this country. So as long as the systems stay up and they keep the natives from, from rebelling, that's all they're interested in doing. So I believe they're going to come up with another scheme that's going to keep this thing in check. Now, China, just lowered interest rates and dumped more stimulus in. Australia, 
lowered interest rates. India, India, the rupee is crashing. They're going to dump more stimulus. Inflation. In. Inflation and just to, Brazil, lowering interest rates. Their, their GDP numbers are way off. Russia, look at, the, look at the price of commodities. Oil prices are plummeting. Why? A lot of it has to do with supply and demand. The demand is not there. So what There's we've got is depression in the real economy with certain areas of inflation. That's like a double whammy, isn't it? You got it. And so they know this. And so this is a big weekend because if they don't pull, this is the one to watch. If the euro crisis isn't solved, the entire global economy crashes. Most of China's exports go into Europe. The next big market is the U.S. If the U.S. and Europe don't buy, China, Vietnam, Indonesia, India, they don't sell. If they don't make stuff to sell, Australia, Brazil, Chile, Bolivia, they're not exporting natural resources. The entire system is collapsing. The one to watch is Europe. And listen, listen to what Obama is doing already. They're already blaming Europe for the problems over here in the U.S. And there's, I mean, the lousy job numbers, one thing after another, productivity numbers, new home sale numbers. You go down the list, they're blaming Europe. Now, having said that, we saw Osama bin Bernanke, America's public enemy number one yesterday, come out and say, well, you know, we haven't closed the door on QE3. We're still looking at it. Something may happen. Here's my forecast. Watch for the unemployment numbers in June and July, particularly the June numbers when they come out. If they're dismal, count on more QE2. To me, Bernanke is nothing more than a flunky for Obama, just like Greenspan was for Bush 1 and Bush too. But Bush won, if you go back to the 1992 elections, they started lowering interest rates and juicing the economy before the 92 election, and they just came up a little bit too short and allowed Bill Clinton to get in there. They won't make this mistake this time. They will do everything, everything to juice this economy before the election, and short of that, if they don't, El Presidente of Los Estados Unidos, because we've turned into a banana republic, will start a dandy little war. Hey, you want to send some more drones? How about knocking out Iran? I got to tell you, Alex, we got to stop them Syrians. Hey, look what's going on over there in Yemen. Those Al-Qaeda's are loose. Got to get down here in Sudan and Somalia. No, they're going to take us to war if they can't bail us out of the economy to make it look good so Obama wins. So who are you predicting they're going to put in? Not that it matters between the two. I think it's going to be Obama. That's our forecast. Uh, we don't see Romney beating him. It's a presidential reality show. And, and, the, and the people vote on the, on the one, you know, they, that's saying that politics is show business for ugly people. Obama is a better performer. That's all it comes down to. Well, maybe that's what Ron Paul and Rand Paul think is get him on the VP. They run, they lose. But now Rand is even better known. And then that gives him a shot in four years. But the Pauls have never had never played politics. And it just seems so destructive. It is. It is because this isn't about politics. It's about principle. It's about morality. It's about war. Look at the report that came out today. What are our soldiers committing suicide one guy a day? I mean, can't the country wake up to this? We're, we're using these poor men and women as cannon fodder for psychopaths to send them into these terrible places like Afghanistan and Iraq for what? For five, for six, seven, forces? for five, six, seven tours. Okay, I, I've been asking the questions here on the economy, on politics. In the new Trends Journal coming out, uh, what else are you really looking on uh, or looking into right now? Oh, it, it, it's, it's, the, it's the global economic issue. We are very concerned of a global collapse and a move to World War III. Because here, add it up, Alex. Even, even, even the Republicans and Democrats could add this one up. You got a war in Yemen. You got one in Syria. 
The people are taken to the streets in Morocco. They had enough of their king. You have a war in Bahrain. Oh, don't call it a war. Them and them Shia uh, Iranians that are instigating it over there. Couldn't be because the fifth fleet is over there. You have Egypt is falling apart. Remember we said nothing would come of the fall with, with uh, Mubarak. Here goes the old boss. Welcome the new boss. Tunisia is still a mess. Spain, the indignados are out in the street. What do you have? 25% unemployment. And they have the gall to call it a recession. It's a depression. Spain, uh, Greece, the new numbers came out. A depression. 24%, 22% unemployment official. You go over to Italy. They're in a recession slash depression. You're seeing uprising and riots worldwide. Hungary is in a recession. Lithuania is in a recession. Bulgaria, Romania. It's a world is at war. It's look at the parties that are coming to power. Yeah, there was look in Italy, the Beppo Grillo part, Grilli party, the, uh, the, the, the five star movement. It's now the third largest party. You look what happened in France with Le Pen. Look what's happening in Greece with that with that new party. That's Cyprus. Anti- yeah, yes. Yeah, so it's one after another. The world is blowing up in front of our face and no one wants to put the pieces together. That's what we're writing about. Joe, what is let it me, going to take? Let me raise this point to you, then it goes back to politics versus principle. What does the ruling class think they're doing? I mean, they've got to know that all they can do is a big war, but that's not going to probably work either, most analysts say. 30,000 armed drones, TSA checkpoints, it's clear they're getting us ready for martial law. But uh, the police and military I talk to are really starting to wake up. Uh, I think we could end up actually arresting these globalists. They're all a bunch of Bernie Madoff, Ken Lay types. Um, I mean, you know, now finally JP Morgan is having to pay back uh, the 600 million or whatever that they got from MF Global. I saw that in the Wall Street Journal last week. Did you get your money back? Oh, no. And that guy, Car- John the Slime, Corzine, he didn't even gaze. They may, they may get, you know, throw some civil suit on him. No, no bringing him in for fraud charges. You haven't seen one head roll uh, in, on Wall Street. The Goldman Sachs gang gets what? A couple of years ago, $555 million fine couple of days worth of business. We neither admit nor deny any wrongdoing. What do you mean? It happened by itself? No, it's a, it, you said before you were mentioning, can't these elitists and globalists see what they're doing? Do you need any better proof than Christine Lagarde, the head of the IMF, the International Mafia Federation, saying last week, let them Greek people pay the taxes. They got to pay the taxes. I have more sympathy for what's going on in Africa than what's going on in Greece. Hey, Christina, baby, paying taxes lately? Hey, no, Salenti. Screw you. Don't you know who I am? I'm Christine Lagarde, a diplomat. We don't pay taxes because we make our own rules. Let me stop you. For those that don't know, EU... Uh, diplomats. I was told this two years ago by a member of the EU Parliament, Nigel Farage, and, and I believed him, but I went and looked it up. They wrote the rules where they pay zero tax. They exempt themselves. 92% of the Greek debt, even Wall Street Journal admits, is derivatives that Goldman Sachs exec they got in as president, Papandreoff, signed them on to. And then she's got the nerve when she's up there, the IMF known to perch on countries and bankrupt them to take control, saying, give me the money! I mean, she is literally, like you said, this is, she makes John Gotti look like a saint. These, yeah. these crooks are so arrogant. She needs to go to hell. It's a, yeah, a let them eat baklava moment from Madame Legrand. So this is what I'm saying. They're out of touch. This is, this is 1797 all over again. You want to get in a good entrepreneurial opportunity? Guillotines may be hot. Because people have had it with this kind of, you see it, it could not be more blatant. There's a total disconnect. 
What's Pelosi worth? What do they say? $120 million? You think she made this money because she's so smart? I think it's 300 uh, mil. I think it's 300 mil. I think she doubled it last few years. Joe. Yeah, I mean, it's all because of inside deals. That's all it is. And by the way, the people that support these parties, they, they're the wannabes. The people out there say, oh, you still could make it. You know, No, you can't. If you're not in the club, you're not going to make it. And they don't want you in the club. So where is it going? That's where it's going. The thing is collapsing in front of us. But as I said, I believe they're going to come up with another stimulus scam bailout plan to get us in, out of the problems. Remember, we're, in, we're going into July, August, September, October, November. So, you know, what, three and a half months? We're basically through Election Day. Oh, and the big one is going to be the debates. Whatever happens in the debates, it's right near the end. That'll ice it for whomever. But I, again, we're putting our, we're betting that, we're not betting, that, you know, because we lose either way. We're saying that Obama is going to win. You're saying in the Don King rigged boxing match that they're going to have Romney take the dive. Romney, he just doesn't have the chops as we see. Well, let me add this. I've seen no Romney bumper stickers. One of my crew saw one in Dallas. I mean, where is this guy? And, and you know, here's Rand Paul, everybody, bowing down, be respectful, kiss the rump of Romney correctly. Exactly. You, and you haven't heard from him since he won what? The Texas primary. So you haven't heard anything about him. He's going to go out there. The guy is stiff as a board. You know, he looks like a, you know, a, a shirt salesman or somebody. You know, he's the perfect look. He has, you know, so he's, he, and Obama knows how to play the game. Again, you see Michelle, she's, you know, she's on the late night shows. You see what state, they know how to play the game better. And all it is, again, is politics is show business for ugly people. And Obama's the better actor. Well, I tell you, either way, we are in a lot of trouble. In a way, I think it's better if Obama gets back in because we already know politically he's a piece of garbage and Romney will fool conservatives to go back to sleep. But, uh, I, I disagree. I think it'll be even more dangerous with Obama. And I'll tell you why. Because Obama gets away with things that George W. Bush could never get away with without the liberals screaming bloody murder. For example, the latest new expose on how Obama goes through the checklist to say, that's a militant, take him out. That's a militant, take him out. That's a militant, take him out. If Bush was doing this, they'd be going You know off what? I revise. You're absolutely right. My point is, politically, a lot of people are going to go to sleep under Romney. But I guess you're right. With the media, Obama is now like the Fuhrer with death lists. And he says, I'll kill citizens. Uh, you know, I'll do whatever I want. Uh, you're right. <sighs> Wow. But I mean, again, it doesn't matter because I'm not voting for either one of them. Yeah. But again, it, it's a, the big thing is if either one wins, we lose. But the, I'm really concerned about Obama, the National Defense Authorization Act, his executive orders, what we've gotten from the Justice Department with the um, fast and furious. Yeah. But, but, and, but, and, but uh, Romney says he loves NDAA. That's what I said. It, we know, but look what happened, how it got slipped through. If Romney or Bush tried to do it, the liberals would have been screaming. But Obama did it, it's lockjaw, you don't hear a word. And Obama, as we're seeing with this checklist of who to take off, oh, look, by the way, uh, El Presidente, uh, the, the militant's family, his wife and kids and in-laws, they're all in the same house. Ah, listen, take him out Kill anyway. Kill him, he says. Thumbs down. No, it's, it's insane. It is. And, and by the way, I make this really clear when people ask me what to do and what could change. And I make this 100% clear. The fish rots from the head down. And until morality comes back into this country, we're doomed. This is a moral issue. And I'm not talking about religion here. I'm talking about morality. The golden rule, do unto others. You know, and I was thinking that could you imagine if the Taliban were occupying Washington, D.C.? Could you imagine these little weenies over there fighting back? They would fold and cave in. No, no, no. The media would, would line up behind the Taliban you and say, it. we'll do whatever you say, sir. Exactly. They would be the Quislings 
of the 21st century, every one of these guys, and I say that because there's not a man among them. There's a, they all talk tough, but they never go out there into the front lines and lead the charge. They all play commander in chief and chicken hawk El Supremo, but none of them get their little <laughs> fingernails dirty. Chicken hawk El Supremo. Uh, speaking of uh, points that you've made, you have predicted that there would be bank runs and that bank holidays. We're now seeing that in Italy. We're seeing that in Greece. We're seeing it to a certain extent in Spain. Uh, and as talk of bank holidays and devaluations accelerate, where do you see that popping up next? Uh, probably Italy, but bigger in Spain. Spain is cooked. There's no way out. And everybody, by the way, everybody's talking about Greece, Greece. What is Greece? 2% of the, uh, the Eurozone GDP. They're nothing. And so that's the big one right now. Spain is bigger, and then Italy is even bigger than that. What is Italy's uh, debt-to-GDP ratio of 120%? And then you look at America, we're even worse in many respects. Uh, imagine when, when, when this happens here, my goodness. Exactly, and everyone seems to have attention deficit disorder. A year ago, do you remember the Beltway blowhards and the Washington wankers, the Republicans and Democrats fighting about how to cut back on the deficit? And do you remember that they downgraded the United States credit worthiness? Does everybody forget that, that our credit worthiness has been downgraded and nothing has been done to improve the situation? No, this whole thing is a house of cards that's ready to collapse. And it's clear they want to use the paramilitary police state function as the race in the hole. But I mean, can't they just get arrested like Bernie Madoff? I mean, there's got to be an end to this somehow, or they're just going to feed us whole hog into authoritarianism? Yes, that's what they're going to do. Look, the only reason that Bernie Madoff took the hit was he screwed the wrong people. He got their very, very rich, the very, very connected, the big names. He got all a big chunk of them. You got a guy like John the Slime Corzine. He gets guys like me. And I was one of the bigger names that kept this thing in the media. But who did he hit? He hit a bunch of smaller commodities. A bunch of farmers that farmers. were hedging their bet. Exactly. That's why they go free. Bernie screwed with the wrong people. So he paid the dues. So no, they, they, and we'll, what are they going to do to us? Just like they're doing over up in Montreal with that Bill 78, where you have no more freedom to demonstrate anymore. And I have to hand it to the students. They're not giving up. They keep going out. What happened to the Occupy movements in this country? They, I thought they'd keep going. Hey, at least we took action with Bilderberg. They were very angry that we were born. You got and it, and you kept that in the news. You did it single-handedly with the supporters behind you. Now, let's play this one back. All of a sudden, Alex Jones says, you know, I don't like the Bilderbergs, but, you know, the Council on Foreign Affairs, they're okay. What would your fans think about you? They would turn against me in a minute. And what if Ron Paul had been out leading things like that? There'd have been hundreds of thousands or millions, not a few thousand over the few days. And absolutely, I mean, I got to say, it's the playing possum the last few months and, and making nice in the debates with Romney. People said the fix was in six months ago, and I got to say it is. And whoever convinced the Pauls to do this are political idiots, and you ought to fire their ass or take credit for it. You have to take, you, by the, you, 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 nobody, nobody puts a gun to your head. Not a man. A man doesn't do those things. They stick by their principles. They stick by their word. That's what makes a man a man. Nobody can make me do anything. I can't be bought out, sold off, threatened. Yeah, if they come and put a gun to my head, I'll say I'm getting out of here. But other than that, no, nobody can make me say anything or do anything. I agree, but, but I'm not. you, as I said, you... You becoming a member of the Council on Foreign Affairs is the equivalent of Ron Paul supporting Romney. You would lose all your credibility, it, all your Exactly, affairs. exactly. Even if I wanted to sell out, which I wouldn't, I'm political you know, savvy enough, and I'm not even that smart, to know that's suicide. What the hell are they thinking? 
What they've done is they've killed the freedom movement. And that's what this movement was about. And that's what everybody put their, their necks on the lines and their feet on the ground for. And you were talking about they have the military in place, as you well know, with the signing of the National Defense Authorization Act. It also repealed the Passe Comitatus Act of 1878, which now allows the military to come and occupy any city, village, state, you name it. Sure, Gerald, but just to interrupt you, I mean, I just want to be clear here, though. I mean, I think they really hurt the freedom movement with Ron Paul's name on it. And, and I agree with you, they shouldn't throw somebody under the bus, an advisor, but they should come out and say how this thought process happened. They should clarify it. Uh, or they're going to destroy themselves. But I don't think the freedom movement's dead. It's still growing because folks are upset. But I do think it's a serious blow. What? Well, no, no, I agree. No, it's going on. It's big. But Ron Paul was the titular head. He was the one that articulated it. He was the one that brought it into the public. Look, I learned a lot from Ron Paul. I have to tell you, I did not know that the Federal Reserve was a private operation criminal operation until I learned it from Ron Paul many years ago. Ron Paul opened my eyes up to a lot of and things. And that's what makes us so sad is he's so I know. good. It's, it's, that's what I'm it's saying. It's like a family member. It's, it's, oh, it's horrible. I, I'm sorry, go so, ahead. No, now, so going back on the economic front, it's very important again to watch how this unfolds over in Europe. It's also important, I urge everyone to spend a few minutes a day. And by the way, go to your site. Your site's one of my first hits in the morning. The information you're putting up there, you can't find most any place else. But also, I'm urging everyone to tune into the Chinese news. Yes. It's the, it's the best propaganda outlet out there to really hear what's going on in China. It's almost comic book quality, but they really let you know about what they're thinking. And more importantly, they're covering issues around the world and putting film crews in places that you don't see, along with Russia today. But one other, and people are going to flip out when I say this, but just hear me out. The World Socialist website, WSWS, they have the most accurate reporting of any of the major issues from a drone attacks to economy of anyone out there that I read. And I read a lot. I don't go along with the end of it where they own almost every one of them. If the workers of the world were in charge, everything would be okay. You know me, I'm a political atheist, so I don't buy into what the, what the, sure, the politics sure. are. But the, so what I'm saying to everyone now is that the world is collapsing financially. The systems are breaking apart geopolitically. We're ready for a climax. Stay tuned because we're going into the summer, and that's the point I wanted to make. We're going into a vacation state of mind when people are out of tune with what's going on. This is an important time to tune in nightly to sites like yours, to sites like mine, and these other sites that I mentioned. With different perspectives, I agree. This is a critical time. The historians say that more happens in a decade. Sometimes it happens in the last hundred. We're entering a, a time of incredible change. Speaking of sites, uh, there's two URLs that bring us there, but what's the best one to visit to find your site? Oh, Trends Journal, trendsjournal.com. And by the way, Alex, you know, we do, I do Trends in the News videos every day. And uh, so we keep the people right up like what you're doing. But, you know, hours and for our subscribers as well. So, you know, we're on, t we're, at, we're on top of the news and ahead of the trends. Well, you certainly are. And we always appreciate your time, Gerald Salente. Uh, hopefully we don't let them pass all these Internet censorship bills. But like you said, they, they ban free speech in Canada in one state or province. People come out anyways. You know, they may say government's God tomorrow. They may say we don't have speech. You know what? I am going to continue speaking, and it's always darkest before the dawn. They've got to show us how tyrannical they are before we fully wake up, and that awakening is happening. Closing comment. Yes, one thing also, our fine illustrator, Anthony Frieda, just won a national award. Four out of five of the awards were given to him for the illustrations in the Trends Journal. 
So we're very pleased with that. And on another note about me putting my mind and my money where my mouth and heart are, I just bought a piece of property, a stone building, a 1750s stone building on the most historic corner in the United States, right here in Kingston, the only place on each corner where there's a pre-revolutionary stone house. I bought one of them. This is where the first American Revolution began, and I'm starting the second, doing my part, as what you are, to start the second, an intellectual revolution, one of minds and brains, not bullets and bombs, and anyone could Google it up. It's called the Franz, F-R-A-N-Z, Rogan, R-O-G-G-E-N, the Franz Rogan House. I came back from Berlin, and I've told you that I've been haunted by that visit to see this grand nation of the Germans, the people of Goethe, Einstein, Bach, Beethoven, Wagner, be taken down by a two-bit freak. And I came back here and I said, I'm not going to be taken down by these two-bit freaks. And so I decided on the spot, it was a sign for sale, and I, that was on, I came back and I bought it and I closed on it within a month. That's how much I believe in this country that's how much I believe in the people that have in their heart the freedom and liberty to live as free people and not under a dictatorship as we're living now. So that's my latest news. Well, wow, beautifully said, Gerald. And I think what you just imparted to us is you're all in. Instead of, I'm in. Instead of running like so many people are doing, you're going to stand and fight. This is our country. It doesn't belong to the criminal banksters. They're not invincible. And you're all in. And I can see tears in your eyes. And I'm all in, too. Let's commit together to fight as long and hard as we can to restore this republic. We can't run. If we run, people say, oh, Alex, I'm intimidated. They admit they're listening to us because they're criminals. You know what? They're doing that. That's an indictment. A confession by the government they're doing that. A confession that they're illegitimate. It doesn't scare me. We're the good guys. We stand for what this country was founded on and the light of the world. We've become this, this mountain of, of, of authoritarian crap. And it's so good to see you saying, I'm committed, I'm staying, and that's it. Because that's where the power is at. It's never selling out, never compromising. And it's good to know you're there, Gerald. Well, it's good to know you're there. And everyone, I urge everyone to find their dignity, their courage, their respect, and their integrity, and their passion, their passion, not to take crap from these people. There are many, 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 many more of us than them. And if we stand united, we will defeat them. They are only a small minority of sociopaths and psychopaths, just like that little freak Hitler, just like that little freak Mussolini, and just like all these freaks on the presidential reality show. Don't let a freak rule you. Find your courage. I want to leave this earth knowing that I'm the person who I said I was and did what I said I would do. Wow, very well said, and that's what's sad about this move by Paul. I mean, the integrity, and then to just see it, I mean, they better, they better explain this was a mistake or misinterpreted now. If they don't, they're going to destroy themselves. Gerald Salente, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Wow. Well, that's probably some of the most powerful TV we've ever done, and that's what it's all about. I've had to have those discussions with my wife, who's very smart, lived around the world, she lived in Italy, Spain. Uh, and France is the child of a diplomat growing up, saw a lot of stuff, and she's like, this is tyranny. Uh, you know, we got to get out of here. And I've explained to her, there's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to run. We cannot, and we cannot have the spirit. Of course, she's got a lot of courage. She gets the death threats. And they call up and tell her, we just heard what you were talking about to your mom. We're going to cut your head off. I mean, that's who runs this government. They're wiretapping us, and they call my wife and threaten her. I mean, this is real, folks. This is real evil. And to watch these cowards in government that Gerald was talking about in closing, and I'm going to say bye to you after the show, Gerald, to watch these cowards sit there and use our military and our police and turn them against us to carry out this tyranny, it is the ultimate abomination. I'll see you back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m., Lord willing, Central Standard Time at Infowars.com. 
and back on Monday, 11 a.m. Central, on the radio show. Great job to the crew. Get my message to Ron Paul out to him. By the time you see this on television, we're going to be posting it at YouTube and at Infowars.com. Let's bring the message of liberty back to Ron Paul and his son, the Senator Rand Paul. I'm Alex Jones, signing off.